All right, guys, pleased to bring to you the Aquastar Model 60 re-edition. This is the Deep Star, and this is one of the brands. Man, I just smudged it. I was trying to clean it, and I smudged it. Um, this is one of the brands that, unfortunately, met a early demise in the quartz crisis, among many others out there, that now we're seeing, you know, throughout the years, uh, reintroduced and reimagined, you know, with some historical value to them. Uh, it's a, it's, I'm, I'm very happy to take part in that, that process that we're seeing now with the uh, rise of watches being popular again, you know, or more so to see people reinvest in these old brands and bring them back like Phoenix, you know, rising from the ashes sort of thing. So let's get right into this thing. This is a 37 millimeter. Actually, I measure it 37.15, but they're calling it a 37 millimeter case. The lug to lug is a 47.2 millimeter. I mean, check out that. It's fully brushed, nice arch to that, nice profile, thin mid case. It's only 12.8 millimeter thick. That's including this double dome on this crystal, which I didn't find out if it's sapphire or if it's acrylic. Because sometimes when you do these uh, re-releases or whatever, they might be acrylic. I'll, I'll find that out. I'll put that information down below. So, uh, weird or odd, not normal, I guess, 19 millimeter lug width. It's not a deal breaker. There's so many companies out there that now have 19 millimeter straps, but even if you don't want to search outside, I mean, it comes with either the beads of rice, the nylon strap, or a tropic strap, all in 19 millimeter to fit. So pretty much got you covered. And it does taper down to 17.5 millimeter. And then of course you have a milled center part or the clasp stamped on the outer for micro adjust, easy enough to get a good fit there. 6.2 millimeter screw down crown signed, keeping the 200 meter water resist. Then we move to the bezel, stainless steel, and we should probably zoom in so you can see some of this. This is where it gets a little interesting, and I'm sure vintage dive watches actually did this. Whether they had clicks or if it was a friction fit, I don't know. It wasn't around, and I haven't really played with too many vintage ones. But it is a 120-click bezel. Very precise, no play, but it's bi-directional. Which is kind of convenient for the way I use bezels, but probably not the best for an actual dive watch, but this is not like most watches, probably ever going to be used in that circumstance. Also, unique movement. It has a LJP G100 in this thing, and I'm not even going to begin to try to say that um, brand, but it is a very cool movement, 28 joules, 68 power, res 68 power reserve, 68 hour power reserve, if I can say it right. And it is the top grade movement. It's very similar. I when I was looking at the architecture of it, it seems like it's similar to like saying uh, you know a top grade ETA movement where it has some extra good parts and everything. So um, I'll put a link to uh, some information if you want to research that movement. I, I just I don't see it used very often in the watches that I get to handle, and it looked very interesting. So you can see the dial on this is ink black completely ink black glossy. You have a very high polished framed handset, very legible, tons of loom placed on that and printed on the dial. Date at the three o'clock. It is a four hertz movement. You can see the seconds hand sweeping at 28,800 vibrations per hour. The crown interaction is perfect. It works great. Price point on this thing, depending on how you get it. If you get it on the nylon strap with the compass, it's going to be just under $1,000. If you get it on the Tropic strap, it's just barely over $1,000. Now, if you get it on the bracelet, it's, you know, uh, $1,150 essentially. So if you're not a bracelet guy, then just save yourself the money and get it on one of the other two options. But if you are a bracelet guy, person, uh, definitely get the beads of rice and then just, you know, pick that stuff up after. But here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. It wears great, makes me think 
that I could wear a 37 millimeter watch because of that 47 millimeter lug to lug. I actually enjoy the way this looks on my wrist. You know what I didn't take a closer look at is the um, pins for the bracelet. It looks like they are screws. Okay, so they, they do have screw pins, so it'll be easy enough to size there. I really like that bezel action too. This is just a good looking watch overall. Maybe give us a quick blast of the UV light. Let's kill the studio lights and see how the loom performs on this guy. There we go. Looks like I've often seen this on a lot of watches. A little bit heavier application on the loom pip, the hour, minute, and seconds, and then the printing on the dial. A little less, but still adequate. There it is. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next vid.